on guys welcome back to part four of the real-time chat app series in swift we're going to be picking up exactly where we left off in part three and in part three if you recall we set up selecting a image and taking a picture for our uh, account creation controller and in today's video we are going to set up the firebase integration and account creation as well as logging in. So we're gonna start with the basics of that. So that being said, let's jump straight into it. So if you recall in the first or second video, we already did a pod init via terminal. Now we wanna bring in three Firebase dependencies. So go ahead and open up terminal and you want to CD into your project and go ahead and open up that pod file that we created. And in here, we want to bring in three dependencies. Now, later on in the series, we're going to bring in some other dependencies. But for now, let's just stick with these. So we want Firebase core. And make sure you lowercase that P, otherwise you'll hit an error. And we also want Firebase auth, which allows us to authenticate. And later on, we're going to need this, but we might as well bring it in now. And that is Firebase database, which allows us to interface with the Firebase real-time database. So once we have those in text edit, go ahead and save and quit. And let's run a pod install. So this is going to go and resolve all of our dependencies for us. And we should see some green statements here like so, as things begin to install. Now you'll notice that we have more than the three that we've added in our pod file being installed here. And that's because there are behind the scenes dependencies that Google brings in for us. Uh, and it's overhead that we don't have to worry about. So once this has successfully installed, we can actually close the Xcode window with a command W. And we want to open up the project name. And there should be an XC workspace in here now. And the workspace, if you're not familiar, is an aggregate project which includes our installed frameworks and dependencies. So open that up and let's expand our window a little bit to give ourselves some more room to work. And before we actually get into some of the code here, we need to set up the Firebase console with our app. So come on over to the project navigator and copy your bundle ID. You're going to need this to set it up on firebase.com. So once you've copied that, navigate on over to firebase.com, sign into a Google account of your choice, and hit this to get started. And we want to create a project. So we're going to select this. It wants a name. So we're going to say, uh, yeah, let's do Messenger. Why not? And let's hit this to continue. We're going to pretend like we read all this. It's basically telling us uh, to enable Google Analytics and we're going to select the default account for analytics. And what else? We're going to select this and let's just call this. We don't want to create a new one. Actually, we want to click on this and use the default account. Hit that and hit continue. And now it's basically creating the Firebase project here. And a project can have one or more apps in it. So you can imagine if you have an iOS app, a web app, and an Android app, you can include them all under the same project. But that said, we're gonna need to include the iOS app here, which is why we copied that bundle ID from Xcode. So now that this is created, it'll bring us to our dashboard for the project. And we wanna add an iOS app. And right here, it asks for the bundle ID. So let's paste that in. These two are optional, so we can leave these empty. Let's go ahead and continue. And now it's gonna give us this Google services plist file that we want to download and drag into our project as shown here in the image. So let's come back here and drag this file to the root of our project. And that is under the first yellow folder and not the actual blue folder. So make sure you throw that Google services file under the root here. Uh, I've had issues before where the project was unable to resolve it if you put it in an inner folder, 
but we'll we'll organize this at some point in the series and see if we get that error and we'll resolve it together. So now that you have that in there, go ahead and hit next a bunch of times until you get the spinner. And basically what it was telling us to do in those steps is navigate to your app delegate.swift. And again, to get this window to search, it is command shift O. And in your app delegate.swift, we need to import Firebase. And we need to call a function off of Firebase app. And the function is configure. And if you try to call this configure function uh, and run your app without bringing in that Google services file, your app will crash. But now that we have it in, we can actually uh, select a simulator here. Let's go with that one. Hit command R to build and run. And we should see our app pop up here in just a moment. So it's building for the first time after we've installed these dependencies. So it might take a few more seconds than usual. So bear with it. And essentially, once uh, the simulator is up, it's going to attempt to connect to the Firebase backend. And we should get a green check mark here saying that everything is hooked up correctly. So it looks like Xcode is deciding to be extra slow. So it's almost there. Hopefully. Feel free to forward the video a little bit. There it goes. I feel like it always finishes as soon as I say forward the video a little bit. But anyways, there we have our app and we should be on our login screen. Hopefully. There it goes. Okay, cool. A little slow, but nevertheless, we're on our login screen. Let's expand that. And let's go back to the simulator. And over here, it's still giving us the spinner. So sometimes it takes a few tries. So what I like to do is just leave this open for a few seconds. And if you don't get the check mark here, what we're going to do is close the app, delete it from your simulator, do a command shift K on the project. This will clean the project. Now hit command R to build and run again. And it's going to freshly build it and freshly install. Uh, I apologize. It's going to do the whole installation and build again, but let's bear with it. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes it just needs some time to adjust. So it looks like the first time we ran the app that actually did communicate. It was just slightly uh, delayed. But let's go ahead and continue. And now our app is hooked up over here. So the next thing we want to do is enable uh, email, password, account creation, and login. So we want to go to authentication. And under sign in services, we want to find email and password. And we want to enable the first switch here. So now once this is enabled, whoops, once this is enabled, let's make sure we hit the save button. And now we should be able to use the email and password APIs provided by Firebase Authentication. So let's go to the register view controller and let's try to register a user. So let's hit this pause button. So let's talk a little bit actually about the registration workflow. So in this video, what we're going to basically do is simply create a user with an email and password. But if you recall, our registration form over here also includes a first name, last name, and a picture, a profile picture field. So these, this bit of information, the name and the image, wherever we upload it to, we're going to hold that in the database, whereas the account will be identified by the email and password. So in this video, we're simply going to take a look at the email and password bit, and then we're going to dive into the database in a dedicated video since it's way more involved. And I think it's pretty important to get a really good understanding of how to set up your schema and whatnot. So let's first get started by importing Firebase auth to our register view controller. And let's find that function that gets called when we tap that register button. 
So it should be this one right here that we do some basic validation in. And you'll notice we have our email and our password fields in here. So what we want to do essentially here is basically try to create an account. So we're going to say Firebase auth dot auth dot auth one more time. And we want to do create account with an email and password. So create user rather with email and password. And for the email, pass in that email, password, pass in that password. And if I'm not mistaken, this completion handler takes two values. So I'm going to call it foo comma foo in because I forget what these parameters are. But we're going to command click onto rather into this create user. And let's go take a look at what these uh, these parameter types are. So it looks like this is complaining because I guess there's one parameter. Let's see. Okay, it looks like it highlighted. So let's try to click into this one more time. Still have issues. So let's hit Command Z a few times. Start typing that again. And let's click into this to see what the signature is. And what I am looking for in particular is the signature of the completion handler. So Command click into that. And you'll see this completion handler is basically going to return two things a auth result and an error. So pro tip, if you ever don't know the signature of a particular function or API you want to use, don't hesitate to uh, command click into it. So this is going to be auth result and error in as follows. And if we hit command B, we should be building now like so. And let's see, we want to make sure an error does not occur. So we're going to say guard error equals nil. And if an error occurs, we're simply going to print out error creating user. And I believe this auth results has a success on it. So we're going to say if auth results. Uh, equals and looks like this is actually not an enum like I anticipated so let's click again into this and see what the options for auth results are so again let's go back to this closure and hit that and let's take a look at what the options are for this object here I could have swore it was a could have swore it was an enum, but it looks like it's a NS object itself, and there's an initializer, and there is a user, and there is additional information that we don't want, and credential. Okay, so what we're going to check in here is make sure auth result is not nil. So that's what we'll do. So we're going to say guard led error is nil, and we're going to say results is auth result since it's optional and if both of these things pass then we know that we have successfully created a new user and it's complaining because we're unwrapping this object here into results but not using it so we're going to say the user is results dot user and let's just print out uh, created user and in this case, we'll just pass in the user to the print statement. So go ahead and hit Command B and hit Command R to build and run. And let's try to register a user. So you'll notice again, like I mentioned, we're not doing anything with first name, last name with the picture here. However, our validation requires that we have all of it filled out. So we are going to fill all of it out. So let me move the simulator over. And let's go back here and just refresh this to make sure there's no issues here. So we have, again, no users in here yet, but let's see if we can create one. So we're going to say the first user is Joe Smith, Joe at gmail.com. Now, don't worry, this won't actually send an email. I'm sure this is a real person's email, but 
go figure. And password, we'll just do password. So go ahead and hit this button. And if you take a look down here in the console, we get created user and an instance of the user that is passed in. So that makes uh, sense because we didn't go into this else case for the guard, which means this successfully did create a user. So if we come on over here, and if we refresh this, we should see our new user, which we do. Perfect. So let's go ahead and just hook up the login side of this. So you see that nothing actually dismissed over here. Uh, it's because we're not handling the authentication state and the view controller transition. We'll take a look at that in the next video. But what I do want to do is hook up the login side of things. So head on over to the login controller. And once again, let's import Firebase auth. And in the function where a user gets into once they tap the button, we want to log them in by saying Firebase auth dot auth one more time. And I believe this is a login and we want to pass in an email and password. Is it login? I think it's login. Let's see, let's do email. So there's create user. Ah, it's sign in, not login. So we want to sign in with email and password. Let's see if we can find it. Sign in with email and password. So for the email, let's pass in the email, pass in the password. And I think the completion handler here is the same. So we're going to have it auth results and the error. Hit command B. Hopefully it compiles like so. And again, let's do that same guard statement here. So we are going to say guard let uh, result equals auth results and error is nil. Otherwise, we'll return and we'll also print out for the time being uh, failed to log in user with email. And we'll interpolate the email address in here. And then if we did sign in, let's grab that user out of the results. And we will print out logged in user user and let's hit command r to build and run and actually what you want to do is delete the app actually from the simulator before we test the login piece of it and the reason is uh, is because firebase's framework will cache the login state so we need to explicitly call a logout function we're not going to do that in this video but for the sake of testing the login side of things now, we need a freshly installed app. So go ahead and delete it from your simulator, hit command R to reinstall it. So we're gonna say the username, rather the email is joe at gmail.com and password is password. Hit this. And if we take a look down here, logged in user and it has a user. So it didn't go into this guard else case, which means we have successfully logged in our user Joe. So that is a very quick overview of how to set up the basics of Firebase for our chat app and hook up email and password login and registration. In the next video, we're going to actually tie in the logged in state to the view controller updates. So now, of course, when the user opens the app another time, we shouldn't be on login again because we just signed in. And having our user login every time would be a absolutely horrific experience. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And then we're also going to dive way deeper into Firebase, set up a bunch of other uh, login methods. Here are all the ones that Firebase supports. We're going to look at Google sign-in and Facebook. And then we'll also dive into other things that Firebase offers that we'll be utilizing, like analytics, the database, uh, how to upload files, all that good stuff. So that said, if you haven't hit the like button for part four, make sure you do so down below. If you're new to the channel and enjoying this series, hit subscribe while you're at it. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna commit this code via terminal right now and push it up to GitHub. Uh, I will catch you guys in part five.